ladies and gentlemen, Worldwide Sports presents Big Time Wrestling with all the great stars from the world of professional wrestling. Now, let's go ringside with the Dean of Wrestling Commentators, Lord Layton. And hello once again, ladies and gentlemen, Bob Finnegan here once again with another presentation of Big Time Wrestling for Lord Layton. And what a thrilling show we have for you today. And now our contestants, the ring is waiting, and we'll be right back with more action. But first, let's pause for this important word. And ladies and gentlemen, introducing on our first bout of the day here on Big Time Wrestling. You'll give us a proper introduction, too. From Los Angeles, California. From Los Angeles, California, weighing in at a combined weight of 450 pounds, the world tag team champions, the California Hells Angels. for the day here on Big Time Wrestling will be Sal Light. And now we await the referee to give his instructions and our bout will be underway. In the ring at the present time, the World Tag Team Champions, the California Hells Angels. And they take on two very rough and able opponents in the way of Arnold Skolan and Jim Dillon. Something going on in the ring right now between Arnold Skolan and Hell's Angel number one. Some type of complaint registered early here in this bout by Hell's Angel number one. Now they will go through their ceremony of disrobing and I suppose uh, will be treated for the display of their angel walk sometime before this bout is over. And I have been graced with some of their apparel here, our sports microphone. We await the bell. And ladies and gentlemen, this bout, the first bout of the day, is underway. California Hells Angel number one complaining to referee Sal Light that he did not tell his opponents about pulling his long hair. It's Jim Dillon and Hells Angel number one in the center of the ring. Hells Angel number one using those trunks was able to pull Jim Dillon to the mat. Now he gets up, in comes Hells Angel number two. There seems to be some disagreement as to whether they tagged or not, but I believe it was a legal tag. At any rate, we'll wait and find out. California Hells Angel number two. In steps number one. As Hells Angel number two is still in control of this match so far, as an arm lock on Jim Dillon. Now they're to their feet. Now you're going to see this type of harassment from the Hells Angels as they will use this tactic on the referee, their opponents, on the crowd, anyone they can. In steps Hells Angel number two. Saying there was a tag, but to be questioned whether there was a tag or not, I don't know. Now a tag is made, and both Hells Angels are in the ring. The referee Starlight warns that you must leave the ring after you make a tag. It's Hells Angel number two in the ring with Jim Dillon. Now a tag was made. Let's see what, what happens. The referee says there was not a tag. 
And of course he didn't see it, so what he doesn't see, he can't rule on. He says there was no tag, so Jim Dillon remains in the ring with Hell's Angel number one. Now, this is the type of thing they, li they like to use. They like to harass their opponents and the referee and the people so that they can confuse everyone. And they do just that. Jim Dillon taking quite a pounding right now from the California Hells Angels. Double arm chop. Oh, and he hit the mat hard. A tag is made this time. Arnold Skolan is in the ring. Arnold Skolan really putting it to the California Hells Angels. One is out of the ring. The other is down on the mat. In comes Hells Angel number one. He's back through the ropes. Hells Angel number two now jumping out of the ring. Skolan made quick work and getting rid of the California Hells Angels. Arnold Skolan really bringing this bot alive. And now, according to referee Saw Light, it will be California Hells Angel number one coming in against Arnold Skolan. Skolan stepping very near the corner rope. He backs off now. Come on, and Hells Angel number one steps back to have a conference. Now he's ready. Into the referee hole. Onto the ropes they go. They'll call for a break now. Let's see. Hells Angel number one is complaining about hair pulling. This is California Hells Angel number one's favorite uh, line uh, about his hair. Standing wrist lock by Arnold Skolan. In comes Hells Angel number two, and he belted Arnold Skolan from behind. Skolan's in trouble. Referee calling for a break. Hells Angel number one refusing to break for any length of time. The referee threatened disqualification, and he stepped back. But in the meantime, here's number two. Hells Angel number two has Skolan in trouble. And they're really working on the throat of this Arnold Skolan. He hasn't had an opportunity to have a breath in that ring. They've kept this referee busy. And in the meantime, they are doing lots of damage. <laughs> The double teaming of the California Hells Angels, I would say, have, well, it's won them many bouts. They are successful at it. But it's hard to see it, even though it's before your very eyes. They have done much to put away this Arnold school and pounding away, kicking him, choking him. In steps, Hell's Angel number one. He rakes those fingers across the eyes of Skolan. Now the tag is made. In steps, Hell's Angel number one. Before he leaves, Hell's Angel number two had to put those shoes into the midsection of Skolan. Now a tag is made in the corner, and in steps, Jimmy Dillon. In steps, Jimmy Dillon. Oh, and he drives the Hells Angels head right into that uh, turnbuckle. Now another tag is made. The Hells Angels are in control now. And it happens just that fast, so fast. It's hard to keep up with these rough and rugged California Hells Angels. A body slam, he's up on, he's down. A three count could be, it is, and it's all over. Ladies and gentlemen, let's go right to the ring and more exciting action on Big Time Wrestling. Introducing from the Watts section of Los Angeles, California, he weighs in at 251 pounds, the sweet man, Thunderbolt Patterson.
opponent today here on Big Time Wrestling from Troy, Ohio, weighing 224 pounds, Jim Paderowski. here on Big Time Wrestling as he now prepares to take on a new opponent in the way of Jim Paderowski. We await the bell. Both men to the center of the ring. Onto the ropes, Thunderbolt Patterson. Doesn't waste any time. They're going to work on this Jim Paderowski. Thunderbolt Patterson. One of the most vicious men in professional wrestling. Is trying to put his opponent away. Driving that hand into the throat of Paderowski. Choking him now. Patterson trying to camouflage his choke. He's caught and he must break it up. And you're going to see one thing. There goes Paderowski through the ropes. He's on to the floor now. And out of the rope steps Patterson. Adding a hard boot to the back of this young gentleman. Patterson will never break for any length of time. You'll notice in any of his bouts. He doesn't give his man a chance, an opportunity to take a breath. As you see here, he has Paderowski on the ropes. He's hitting him, gouging his eyes. Trying to put his man away just as fast as possible. Paderowski coming to life now. He's putting that fist in there. He needs Patterson. He has Patterson in the corner. And there's a mistake that many wrestlers made. You never take your eyes off Thunderbolt Patterson because he is always ready. Paderowski, feeling that one, really hit the mat. Now Patterson has him in the air. He puts one to the midsection. Patterson now putting the boot to his opponent, screaming something to the audience. He puts him down again. And this Paderowski, I can tell you, is having a hard time trying to catch a breath. Patterson literally pounding the breath right out of his opponent. He now works on the eyes. He drives his opponent into the turnbuckle. He has Paderowski in trouble. And we could, ladies and gentlemen, be very near the end of this bout. We saw light telling Patterson to stay out of his opponent's eyes. There was that right. There went the right fist. This could be it. This could be it. And it is. It's all over. It's all over, ladies and gentlemen. And the winner of the fall of the match is Thunderbolt Patterson. Coming in. Ladies and gentlemen, we take you now to the ring in our next exciting bout of the day here on Big Time Wrestling. It's a pleasure for me to introduce at this time from Greece, weighing in at 283 pounds, ladies and gentlemen, Spiros Arian. His opponent today here on Big Time Wrestling from Parts Unknown, weighing in at 240 pounds, the spoiler. This will be another appearance of the Greek wrestler Spiros Arian, and I'm sure by this time he is a favorite of many of you fans out there. And here you see a different type of wrestler. He has a different approach. He has a, a very big determination when it comes to his opponent. And there's our bell. You will see what I mean as he goes after the spoiler. Arian and his 
unusual style as he doesn't back off. He stays right with his opponent. Not letting his opponent at any one time during his bout get too far away. He likes to keep his opponent as close as possible. He is very aggressive in the ring, as you can see. And he stays after his opponent, uh, pardon me, his opponent, stays after his opponent constantly. The spoiler now, punching away at Spiros Arian. Arian really taking, really taking some punches right on the chin now, as the spoiler has Arian on the ropes. One, two, Referee, sound like calling for a break. Arian steps back. Arian with a real hard forearm blow, decks the spoiler. Here's that confidence I told you about a moment ago. And when he puts one on you, he puts one on you. By Rosarian. Has derived much of his wrestling ability and his technique. The Greek wrestlers of old and the Greek warriors of ancient times. And he tries to carry on great Greek tradition in the ring. High into the air goes the spoiler on a hard body slam by Arian. And the spoiler backs off, saying, wait a minute. Spoiler has hooked the leg of Arian. Let's see what he'll do to get out of this one. Arian dragging his opponent across the ring, refuses to submit. They're on the ropes now, and the referee will have to break it up. Chest of the spoiler puts his knee into his head. Another as he drives the spoiler into the mat each and every time. On the ropes goes the spoiler. Back body drop. He was high in the air on that one. There's Arian putting that knee into the face of the spoiler as he's trying to put him away now. There's his hold. That's his hold. This could be all over. It's the three count. He weighs in at 315 pounds, Big Jess Ortega. His opponent here on Big Time Wrestling from Phoenix, Arizona, he weighed in at 243 pounds, Black Jack Gordon. go to their corners. There's the bell, and this, another exciting bout is underway. Big Jess Ortega goes right into action as he has Black Jack Gordon on the run. Hip toss, and like a shot, down went Black Jack Gordon. Gordon with a brief head scissors, it didn't work. Both men are to their feet. You see Big Jess Ortega moving around in that ring, standing wrist lock by Gordon. Ortega, with one arm, pushed Gordon to the mat. Now he goes into his bear hug, a type of bear hug used often by Jess Ortega. Now, Blackjack Gordon probably made the biggest mistake in this match just then, going to the eyes of Big Jess Ortega. throwing a few punches in there, wasn't able to do any damage, but he gets a hard one right into the forehead from Jess Ortega. And we heard that one land. It was really in there. Now, ladies and gentlemen, 
you see the greatest stars in the professional wrestling world right here on Big Time Wrestling, and today has been no exception because we have had and uh, will present the biggest stars in the wrestling world, always here on Big Time Wrestling. Big Jess Ortega, the gentleman in the ring right now, one of the most widely traveled wrestlers in the world. He's putting it to this Black Jack Gordon. Now both men they slap each other up into the referee hole right quick. Ortega takes Gordon to the mat. He has a body scissors. Still in the body scissors is Black Jack Gordon. Ortega roughs him up a bit, raise him high in the air, and he comes down hard right in a very bad place. Ortega, with tremendous pressure in that body scissors, is really putting the raspberries to this Black Jack Gordon, and the crowd, they show their approval. Ortega, he's wasting no time. And we are in our fourth bout of the day. Now, Gordon comes up. Ortega pushes him on the ropes. He comes off the ropes. And he has second thoughts about stepping into those two feet of Jess Ortega. Standing wrist lock. Applied by Ortega. He takes his man down. Referee Saw Light is there to ensure that the bout is all according to the rules. It's all on the up and up. Around behind comes Black Jack Gordon, and Jess Ortega breaks that full Nelson. Ortega with tremendous power in those arms. Now, Gordon grabs another hole. Ortega pulling right out of it, and this has been the story here through most of this bout. This Gordon has just not had the luck on his side, or should I say the ability, I don't know which. Gordon going to the eyes now, and Jess is losing his temper. The referee warns Gordon, you got to do it according to the rules. Ortega, pulling out of that hold, gives him a little slap on the back for good measure, and a, and a hard slap on the back that one was. Both men to the center of the ring. Gordon putting a couple punches into the ribs has done his best to try to stop Jess Ortega, but he's had a hard time of it, and he's not been able to do it so far. Ortega has Gordon in the corner. Gordon going to the hair has Ortega on the ropes. The referee calling for a break. Chop by Gordon. He doesn't let Ortega up. He goes to work on his man. Going to the eyes. Ortega trying to regain his vision. Is still in trouble. The referee warning Black Jack Gordon to stay out of his opponent's eyes. Gordon disregarding. Referee saw light pounds away. Now what's happening? Big Jess coming to life. Pounding away at Gordon. Throws him. Arm whip into the turnbuckle. He picks his man up. What's happening now? Arm whip into the rope. Puts that big shoulder into the chest of Gordon. High end in the air he goes. Body slam.
Ladies and gentlemen, we come to bout number five here on Big Time Wrestling. We go to the ring and introduce to you from New York City, weighing in at 250 pounds, Mark Lewin. His opponent today here on Big Time Wrestling from Kansas City, weighing in at 305 pounds, Ox Baker. This is going to prove to be some bout because it seems that these two gentlemen have been asking for this bout for quite some time and now they have their opportunity on big time wrestling to settle their differences. Mark Lewin and Ox Baker. A little cutery there by Ox Baker. We wait for the bell. Mark Lewin steps to the center of the ring. Ox Baker is there to face him now. Let's see what maneuver Mark is trying to uh, do here. He's got Baker in the corner. Went in for a hole and Baker went right to the corner. Nothing happened. He does it again. A deliberate slap in the face by Mark Lewin. As he makes a bit of a fool out of the big ox. Mark reversing the arm hold just as fast as Baker put him into it. He reversed it and now he has the ox on the other end. And just as slick as Grease Lightning, Mark Lewin steps right out of the hole and... There's one mighty embarrassed Ox Baker in the ring right now. Both men lock up. Baker elects to use his foot for a little bit of aid. Mark Lewin coming up from behind, grabs the head of Baker. Oh, and Baker comes down hard with that arm. Lewin, in quite a move, hooks Baker's leg and he brings him down. Just barely good enough for a one count. Mark Lewin really twisting that leg, applying that pressure. He bends it. Now Baker has the ropes and they'll be forced to break the hole. No time, Baker going after Lewin. Lewin after Baker, he goes to the bear hug. And oh, he slaps those ears of Ox Baker. Really, that smarts. Truly. Mark Lewin, who's been slapping Ox Baker. Embarrassing him throughout this entire bout thus far. And now Baker comes back. He has Mark on the ropes. Baker refusing to break is choking Lou, and he has him in trouble over here on the ropes. Referee saw light trying to break that hold. Is Baker doing the damage? That's the thing. He has Lewin in trouble. Okay, okay, okay. And Baker refusing to break. He breaks just long enough to break the count. And he is really, he is really putting it to Mark Lewin. Baker working away, choking his opponent. Yeah, sure, 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 sure. Mark Lewin. Okay, sure, sure. One, two. Yeah. Lewin's fighting out from under the ropes. He'll try to get to his feet. He puts a couple in the midsection on this Baker. He goes right to work on him. Baker's tangled up in the ropes and he can't get free now. He steps out of the ring. While in the ring, Mark Lewin awaits the return of the ox. Into the ring now steps Baker. And Mark Lewin says, I'm ready for you. I'm ready for you. Into a headlock is Mark Lewin applying the pressure now. 
Lewin still able to maintain that headlock. A side headlock here applied by Mark. Mark Baker going to the air. He's caught by the referee. And Lewin delivers a hard punch in there. Now he takes the offensive off, the body slam. He comes up both feet into the midsection. Boy, that was hard. Now he grabs Baker in a sleeper hold, and he will try to put him to sleep. This could be the one. When you get in that sleeper hold, unless... Something of a miracle happens, ladies and gentlemen, you go under, and he's putting the ox, it appears, fast asleep, his arms growing limp, Mark Lewin putting that pressure, the referee signals for the bell, and it's all over, the winner of the fall in the match with a sleeper hold is Mark Lewin. Ladies and gentlemen, we come to our final bout of the day. Here on Big Time Wrestling, we go right to the ring for the proper introduction. Introducing from Troy, Ohio, weighing in today at 223 pounds, Junior Paderewski. His opponent today on Big Time Wrestling, ladies and gentlemen, from Omaha, Nebraska, weighing in at 251 pounds, killer, Carl Cox. <laughs> and this should prove to be quite some bout because, as you know, killer Carl Cox is a man of action. To say nothing for this young man, Junior Paderowski, so we should have quite a bout on our hands. Go for the handshake. We don't get a handshake, so we await the bell. Both men to the center of the ring. Cox going right into a headlock. He pulls something out of his trunks. Flying there by Cox. Whatever he had from his trunks, he has in his hand right now. And how he is using it on his opponent. The referee, referee Sal White, unable to see it. I'm unable to see exactly what it is myself. I can't quite tell what it was that the killer pulled out of his trunks. Nevertheless, he drives it into the neck, the throat of Junior Paderowski. Hard, hard chop now by the cop. He now puts the boot to his opponent. Cox with a taped right hand. Puts a big punch on Paderewski. Now grabs him by the hair and he's reached into his trunks once again. Whatever he had hidden inside his trunks, he uses to punch it to the throat of Paderewski. Flying there. Cox, putting that knee into the chest, goes for the press. A two count, and he pulls his opponent from the mat. Cox is really, really hurting his opponent. With something he pulls from his trunks, and the fans are aware of it, and they don't like it. Cox driving that fist into the throat of Paderowski has his opponent. He hasn't heard he could have beaten him a moment ago. 
He went for the press, and when he got to the two count, he lifted his head off the mat. Now he pounds away. Living up to his name every step of the way, the killer, Carl Cox. And he puts that fist and whatever it is in his trunks into the throat of Paderowski again, and this young man is really hurt. Now Cox is outside the ring. Paderowski has a moment here to recover if he can catch his breath. hurt. He has this young man in trouble. There he goes again, driving it into the throat of his opponent. And Cox steps out of the ring once more. Cox explaining to the referee that he used his, his forearm, not his fist. Arm whip into the ropes. Off the ropes comes Paderowski. Elbow into the chest. He's down. Cox going for that guillotine chop. He goes for the body count. One, two, three, and it's all over. And the winner of the fall in the match is killer, Carl Cox. Zero. And now, ladies and gentlemen, we step ringside to have a word with the killer, Carl Cox. And I know you've returned to this area with something in mind, and I would like to give you this opportunity to talk about that. First of all, I would like to say that I'm very sorry, I feel very sorry for the people that live in this part of the United States. It's a darn shame that they gotta live under constant fear Every morning, every night, they go to bed, they live in constant fear. They wake up in the morning, they live in constant fear. It's an outright shame. Now, they should move down to some part of the country where they see a little sunshine. Up here, they wake up, they're afraid they're going to wake up in the morning and see the sunshine on some bright day, and they're all going to go blind. Now, that's a fact. So let me say this. For, before I leave here, i got a little bit of time. Before I leave, I would like to say that um, I'm sure you have heard of my reputation around here and you are going to hear more of it. I am here to stay, so get used to me. Don't go sending any letters, just save your money, save on the stamps. Just come out, just watch. The main thing that I'm, I'm here for is the United States champion. You're after the Sheik, the U.S. heavyweight champion, in other words, is that right? That may be correct. You know, I have wrestled all over the world. I just come back from a, a very successful tour in Japan, in Australia, in the Middle East, Hawaii, and I've heard so much about how the Sheik is going around beating everybody, hitting him with the fire and everything. I would like to say this. The Sheik had hit me with the fire one time a few months ago, put me out of action for about six weeks. I thought I was going to leave the sight in this eye. Now, everybody thought I'd forgotten about that. I'm sure uh, Mr. Sheik has thought I'd forgotten about it, but I haven't forgotten about it. I am here. I am here to wrestle the Sheik. If he can get enough guts and enough money together, to come out and challenge me anytime, any place. I will be here, and I haven't forgotten this guy. I'm glad you come out here. The what? The weasel, he's called. That's a matter of opinion. I can say a few things, but they will cut this thing right off the air right away. So if he's a weasel to you, he's a little bit lower than a weasel to me. You amaze me. What he Cox. is is on the bottom of the ocean. What you amaze well, uh, me, Cox. I'm not with you. You've got more guts than brains. You were in the hospital once as a yeah. result of what the Sheik did to you. Now, if you had a brain in your head, you'd run, run in the opposite direction away from him. You're back here now to stay. You want to stay in the hospital permanently. You want both eyes let me, let out. Let me tell you this. Now, I'm going to be very nice to you. I am not going to wrap you in your mouth, which a lot of people like to see me do because I don't want to dirty my hands on you. Now just let me say this, and you carry this back to the United States champion. You and him both and everyone else think that I've forgotten about him hit me in the face with the fire. I haven't forgotten that, pal. I won't forget it. So when the time comes, you tell Miss, come here, come here, I'm not gonna hurt you. No, 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 I'm not gonna, just come here. Because I want you to hear this. You tell the Mr. United States heavyweight champion this. You tell him 
in any way you know how to talk to him, that I am here and I'm not leaving until he gives me a match. And if I don't get the match with him, I may take it out on your hide. So if you don't want to take it out on your hide, you just pass that message along, pal. All right? I'll okay. see that the message gets there. And I'm going to show you how big my heart is. After you meet the Sheik, any place, anywhere, we're even going to start you in business. We'll buy you the tin cup and a gross of pencils to stand on the street corner because you'll be blind for life. That's fine. At least I'll have an honest occupation. Well, it's been a pleasure uh, speaking with you. I thank you very much. It's been a pleasure speaking with you. And I'm not through. You'll hear a lot more about me. Ladies and gentlemen, that's the killer Carl Cox. We heard both sides of the story, one from Louise and the, and the Sheik and one from the killer. We don't know who's going to lose who or what's going to happen, but anyway, at any, at any rate, it should prove to be interesting. And ladies and gentlemen, now we come to our final bout of the day, our curfew match, and let's go ringside. Ladies and gentlemen, introducing from Provo, Utah, weighing in today at 232 pounds, Jim Dillon. His opponent today on Big Time Wrestling from Russia, weighing in at 236 pounds, Anestis Bresnik. That will be good news for Sheik fans, good news for Killer Carl Cox fans. We'll have to wait and see, but at any rate, it seems as though we have a new feud brewing. And our bell has rung, our bout is underway. Young Jimmy Dillon from Provo, Utah, meets in the ring here today on Big Time Wrestling with Anestis Bresnik. Mr. Dillon swings right into action. Bresnik trying to get around behind is now throwing those punches in. He has Dillon in a choke, the referee trying to get in there. He has, he has caught Bresnik, they break it up. Now they go to the corner. Bresnik in a headlock. Puts that fist in there. And this is Jim Dillon's debut here on Big Time Wrestling. A young man from way out in Utah. Flying mare by Dillon. He brings both those feet down across the eyes of Bresnik. And let me tell you, those shoes, they hurt when they come down across those eyebrows. Bresnik trying to get his vision clear. Dillon with a headlock, hip tosses him. Now Bresnik comes up with a hip scissors. Out of it comes Jimmy Dillon. Bresnik grabs the leg, down goes Dillon. Bresnik applying the pressure. Let's see what happens here. Just barely a one count by referee Sal Light. The shoulder's not close enough, uh, of course, to the mat uh, to get a count. Now Dylan trying to spread Eagle Bresnik and break the hole. He has succeeded in doing just that, and he comes up with a leg lock. Jimmy Dillon applying that pressure. Bresnik going for the hair. The referee has caught him. And just in time. Oftentimes, we bring you some of the up-and-coming rising young stars in professional wrestling. And today it is our pleasure to bring one more of those stars to you. He's not been a professional more than a couple of years, but since becoming a professional wrestler, Jim Dillon has been making quite a name for himself. 
as I said before, he is making his debut here today on Big Time Wrestling. Resnick now putting that boot into the back of Dylan. He's got Dylan in trouble right now. Resnick applying the pressure now. Let's see what Dylan will do to try to get out of this one. Referee saw light says it's all according to the rules. Dylan able to come up with a hammer lock. Now he hooks his arm and applies the pressure in that hammer lock. Anastas Bresnik in the same light has not been in the profession a great length of time. He's been in a year or so since arriving in this country. He attended college. In college, became interested in wrestling and since has pursued wrestling as a profession. So you might say we have two young gentlemen attempting to climb the ladder of success in the ranks of professional wrestling. They're making their appearance here on our final bout of the day here on Big Time Wrestling. Able to get just a one count, Bresnik comes up on top. Oh, oh watch your leg, watch your leg. Oh. Jimmy Dillon in quite a predicament here. Let's see what he will try to do to break this hold. Bresnik in control with the leverage now. Dillon reaches around behind, trying to grab that leg, trying to hook the leg of Bresnik now. He'll try to get his leverage. He's been unable to do it thus far. Our bout is in a stalemate. Dylan very near the ropes. Now this shows you what type of young man he is. Very near the ropes. He could easily break the hole by reaching up and hooking the rope. Now, but he hasn't done it so far. He elects instead to try to break the hole the right way. They're under the ropes now, and the referee in this case now must break the hole. Gets to his feet. He puts the boot to Jimmy Dillon. He comes around from behind and still has the young man in trouble. Bresnik step back. Now he's after Dillon. He has him in a headlock. Bresnik in, in a move. Grabs another side headlock now and again. He rakes those fingers across the eyes of Jimmy Dillon. Repeat performance by Bresnik. Jimmy Dillon trying to get his sight back now. He'll size up his opponent. Dillon grabs the headlock. And he puts a hard punch to the forehead now of Anestis Bresnik as time is running out here on our curfew match. Our final bout of the day, meaning that we are going the remainder of the time available here on this match. But time is running out. It is a curfew bout. And we are coming close to the end of our program today. Thus far, we've had no winner, ladies and gentlemen. Our bout is still underway. And we'd like to take this opportunity in our closing minutes here to thank you very much for watching Big Time Wrestling. We'd like to remind you to join us here every week as we bring you the big stars from the world of professional wrestling. Ladies and gentlemen, until next time, we'd like to say goodbye to all good sports everywhere.